Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Today's lesson I'm really excited about. The power rule is one of the most famous things in calculus. 30 or 40 years from now, when you look back and think, oh yeah, I took calculus once before, this is probably one of the one things you're going to remember, uh, you know, if you don't go into any math stuff. People always remember the power rule because it's really easy and we use it a ton. So what I want you to do first is, all we've been able to do is to take this function, we've had to do that long thing with a limit notation where we do uh, f of x plus h minus f of x. Remember that? We did that a couple lessons ago, all over x minus h. We had to do that big, long, painful thing. Well, there is a shortcut. I'm going to tell you that here are the answers to these. If we used this notation, the limit as h approaches 0, and we plugged them all in, you'd get these as your derivatives. So I want you to pause the video now, write down all these, and then just think about it. If we were in class, I would ask you, like, what's the pattern going on? Do you see the pattern? Hopefully you'd see it, but uh, so pause now and get that written out. Now, did you see the pattern? If you see here, this function's x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, and this one's x, x squared, x cubed, the fourth, and then the coefficients are increasing two, three, four, five. Well, what the power rule does is you focus in on the exponent and you do something with it. Here's the power rule. It's really simple. Whatever the exponent is, in this case, I'm gonna say it's an n, you bring it to the front and then you subtract one to the exponent. So the exponent becomes the coefficient, it drops down to the front, becomes a coefficient, and then you subtract one. That's the power rule, and that allows you to take the derivative. And again, what's the derivative? The derivative is an equation for the slope of the tangent line. Okay, that gives you the slope of the function at an exact point. All right, so let's do this first one. Here's a couple easy examples. This one, let's say dy dx then, the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be the 37, which is the exponent, becomes the coefficient, and then you say x raised to the, and then you subtract 1, 36. It's that easy. That's what we're doing today. All right, this one. So I'm going to use, uh, let's use this notation, y prime. So the derivative of y is going to be the 9 comes to the front, and then you subtract 1 to the 8th. And that now gives you, these would be equations that give you the slope at any point you want of x to the ninth. We don't have to use that long limit notation to find the derivative now. We can just do use this shortcut for the power rule. It is so awesome. All right, let's do some ones that are a little bit trickier. So now you have something that immediately when you look at it, you don't see what the power is. So that's where we have to rewrite it. So let's just rewrite this and say y equals x to the negative 1. Now when we take the derivative, again that's what differentiate means, so we're going to have that dy dx is going to equal negative 1, that comes to the front, x to the, now subtract 1, that's negative 2. Be careful, don't think 1 minus 1 is 0, that's not 0, it's negative 1 minus 1. So that gives you negative 2, and then you can rewrite it, and so we'd have that the derivative dy dx is equal to negative 1 over x squared. There's the derivative. So much faster than f of x plus h minus f of x and all of that mess. So quick. All right, so this one, uh, let's rewrite it. So we're again, we're not taking the derivative yet. I'm just going to rewrite it so it's a little easier to focus in on taking the derivative. So now I'll say, this time I'll use y prime. So y prime is going to be the negative 4 comes down to the front and is the coefficient. And then we subtract 1, so it's now x to the negative fifth. And our final answer then could be negative 4 over x to the fifth. All right, now let's use some radicals. So rewrite this. We're not taking the derivative yet. That's this step. This is taking the derivative. We're just rewriting this so it makes it a little easier. The square root of x is the same thing as x raised to the 1 half power. So then uh, y prime, or dy dx, would equal 1 half comes down, and then you subtract 1, that gives you negative 1 half, if you subtract 1. So then if we clean all this up, uh, let's see, what drops down on bottom? So we're going to have a 1 on top, that 2 is going to be down here, and then it's x to the 1 half on bottom, or in other words, the square root of x. x to the, this is x to the 1 half, dropped to the denominator. All right, this, a little trickier. So we're going to have x equals, this is x raised to the 3 seventh. So just remember, whatever the root of your radical, the root is always the denominator. 
now differentiate. So y prime is going to equal 3 sevenths x to the, now subtract 1. So remember when you're subtracting the number 1, you're now working with fractions, so you got to go back to fourth grade here. We're subtracting 1, or in other words, we're subtracting 7 sevenths from 3 sevenths. So that gives us a negative 4 sevenths. And then we could write this as, let's see here, this gets a little bit messy. So on top we get a 3. On bottom we have a 7. Now you could just write x to the positive 4 sevenths. That's acceptable, but it's really good practice to get used to going in between radical form and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and rational exponents. So this is the seventh root of x to the fourth. So it's 7 times the seventh root. Now for ones that are a little bit harder than what we've done so far, and that is, uh, well, we're going to do two things. One, this is just trickier, and then we're going to take the derivative and plug in a number. So the first part would be to recognize that this is f of x equals x to the first power over x to the one half power. All right, so then that is the same thing as saying x to the one minus one half. You subtract the exponents when you're dividing. And so then that is x to the one half. So that whole thing is just f of x. So now the derivative then, the derivative of f of x is going to equal the one half comes down, and then it's x to the negative one half, which we already did this one up above. And so then that's just one over two square root of x. All right, so then that means that f prime of seven is, plug in the seven to this, and you just get one over two square root of seven whatever that is. So what does this represent? This function, when you plug in a 7 to this function, you'll have a y value, of course, but you'll also know that the slope of the tangent line is this. That is the slope of the tangent line at that exact point. Okay, next one. I just noticed there is a problem here. This is not supposed to say f prime. This is supposed to be f. Your notes will be fixed. I gotta fix that on my packet. Uh, this is just supposed to say f of x. f of x equals this thing. All right, now we want to find f prime of 8. So let's rewrite f of x first, though. f of x is equivalent to, this is x to the 1 third times x to the third. And what does that mean? You're going to be adding the exponents. So 1 third plus 3. So I'm going to say 9 thirds to get common denominators. And then that's going to equal x to the 10 thirds. All right, so now the derivative, f prime of x, is going to equal 10 thirds is now becomes the coefficient x to the subtract one but remember one is three thirds so that's going to become seven thirds that's the derivative so now we plug in an eight f prime of eight what does that equal that's going to be ten thirds okay now watch what i'm going to do here um seventh root oops fix that the cube root because that's a third three on bottom all right, now here's where kids mess up. A lot of kids will just go ahead and write x to the seventh. But when you plug in an eight and you do eight to the seventh power, that's huge, huge. Eight to the seventh power? So I want you to think of it like this. 10 thirds cube root of eight all raised to the seventh power. So when you have this raised to the seven thirds, it doesn't matter which one you do first. You can raise it to the seventh power and then take the cube root or take the cube root first and then raise it to the seventh. And that is something you could do in your head without needing a calculator. Let me show you why. Because this is f prime of eight equals, so this is now 10 thirds. The cube root of eight is two to the seventh. And then two to the seventh is, um, yeah, that's, uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, I'm counting on my fingers, 16, 32, 64, 128. Okay, so then this is 10 thirds times 128, which is 1,280 over 3, whatever that is. But that's the, whoops, that is the slope of this fu weird function when x equals 8. Okay, last part. Parallel tangent lines. This is gonna pop up here and there. And this, I figured this is as good a place as any once you're learning the power rule because it makes it a lot faster to try to do this. Uh, and so parallel tangent lines, when you something is parallel, it means it has the same what? Yep, slope, the same slope. If two lines are parallel, they have the same slope. And remember that slope, we in calculus, whenever we see the word slope, we have to think derivative because slope 
and derivative are kind of interchangeable when we're talking about in calculus. So what we really want is if we want have f of x and g of x, and when does f and g have parallel tangent lines? It's saying when do they have the same slope or when do they have the same derivative? So what you're really doing is saying when does f prime of x equal g prime of x? So all you do is you take the derivative of this one, 4x cubed equals, and then the derivative of this one with the power rule, the three comes down, x squared. And then how do you solve this? You set it all equal to zero. So let's say 4x cubed minus 3x squared equals zero. Set it equal to zero, factor out what they have in common. So 4x squared and then 4x minus three, and then use zero product property. I'll, I'll come up here now, run out of room. So I'm gonna have x squared equals zero or 4x minus three equals zero. Solve them both, you get x equals zero or x equals add three divided by four, three fourths. So what happens at two places? At those two places, x equals zero and x equals three fourths, these graphs, x to the fourth and x cubed, will have parallel tangent lines. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. So here I have those two graphs. Let me make this a little bit better so you can see what uh, I've got going on. Uh, oh yeah, no grid lines down here, sorry. So I have these two graphs. I have x cubed in red, and then I have x to the fourth in blue. And if we zoom in and we look at those two points where x equals zero and x equals three fourths. So x equals zero right here. You can see both these graphs, if we drew a tangent line, both of them would have a flat horizontal tangent line at x equals zero right here. And then at x equals three fourths, so it's not where they cross. Think about this. It's, we're not talking about where they cross. We're talking about uh, somewhere, in fact, let me, let me copy and paste this so we, I can write on it. There we go. So right here we said was horizontal tangents. And then three fourths, so this is about half, there's about three fourths. So here and here. So if we drew tangent lines right here on that one, and you drew a tangent line right here, those tangent lines would be parallel. That's what we just solved using calculus without actually looking at a picture. So if you look back at this, that's what that meant. We said, when do their slopes the same thing? And that's how we figure out exactly where that occurs. Okay, so that's it for this one. Uh, rock that mastery check, and we'll do a few more shortcuts in our next lesson.